Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about homogeneous linear systems with constant coefficients, continuing um, with our differential equations. So some of this is going to look familiar and then we'll just go over all the details and some examples. So our homogeneous system for our differential equations is x prime equals a times x, where a is an n by n matrix, and specifically we're going to be talking about with real constant entries. So we have our eigenvalues of a, which could be real or complex numbers, r, such that a minus r times i, remember i is your identity matrix, and in the past we've used um, lambda for eigenvalues, right now we're just using r, and then so we have a minus r times i, and that times u equals zero, and this has at least one non-trivial or real or complex solution, which is the vector u. And then that vector is actually an eigenvector of our matrix A. And then our characteristic equation of our matrix A, notice what this is, the difference is that we have vertical lines. This is the determinant of A minus Ri equals zero. And then our characteristic polynomial is the polynomial that's equal to this determinant. Okay, so we've seen these things in the past. Hopefully that's a little bit of review on those things. The difference is maybe the notation we're using R instead of lambda. All right, so let's take a look at this first example. Find the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors of this matrix, this two by two. All right, so we're gonna start with our characteristic equation, a minus r i, and find that determinant and set it equal to zero. Okay, so this is just a two by two, so the determinant's gonna be pretty easy. And notice what this is saying. It's saying this matrix a minus the identity matrix times r. And so what that ends up being is it's just r in the diagonals. And then that's why when we subtract the two, it's going to be this entry minus r, and then this diagonal entry also minus r. Okay, and then let's do this two by two determinant. So diagonal down right minus diagonal down left, and set that equal to zero, and simplify a little bit. And we get that r, we have two values, is plus and minus one. Okay, so we found our eigenvalues. It's one and negative one. And now we want to find the eigenvectors corresponding to those eigenvalues. So one at a time, the eigenvector corresponding to positive one. Okay, so we're just going to plug that into our equation here. What this is saying is a minus ri times our vector u equals zero, zero. All right, and in this case, r is one. So we're just subtracting one in the diagonals diagonal down right, and then we can go ahead and make this an augmented matrix and row reduce it. And so notice what we end up with. Just simplifying a little bit, we got this augmented matrix, and then row reducing it, we end up seeing that the um, second row is all zeros. So this translates as u1 equals 3 times u2, and then u2 is free. It's our free variable. All right, and so what we want to do to write our eigenvector is you can just write any um, arbitrary constant here, uh, any arbitrary v uh, variable, I should say, um, since u is free, u2 is free. So I could say u equals 3 times s and then s. And, or I can factor out um, s and say u equals s times 3, 1. And that's because I'm just saying that u2 equals s. So I know it's a free variable. I'm just giving it a letter, so I'm just calling it S. So we're going to do the same thing for our eigenvector um, negative 1. And so subtract negative 1 down the diagonals. And then we go ahead and simplify this by doing our augmented matrix and row reducing it. Notice U2 is free again. And we have U1 equals U2 from row 1 here. U2 is free. Same thing, I'm going to say U2 equals S. And so in this case, my vector, my eigenvector is just s, s, and I can factor that out and say s times 1, 1. All right, so now let's talk about our solutions to our homogeneous system, x prime equals a times x. And so we've seen this before, but let's go over it. And it, it does look a little different now, um, but we've talked about fundamental solution set and general solutions. But now um, this is the format of our solutions, so this is the new part. So if A has n linearly independent eigenvectors, 
We're just going to call them U1, U2, and so on. And then it has corresponding eigenvalues, R1, R2, and so on. A quick example from what we just did, we had two. It was a two by two matrix A. We had two eigenvectors, and we had those two eigenvalues, um, negative one and one. Then the fundamental solution set to this homogeneous system is the set containing these, in, uh, these values here. And so notice this is um, really vectors. It's the vector u1, but multiplied by e raised to the eigenvalue times t. So r, remember r is your eigenvalue. So this is saying e to the eigenvalue times t times vector 1, e to the other next eigenvalue times t times vector 2, and so on, depending on the size of your matrix A. And this is our, your solution set. And then your fundamental matrix, capital X, is the matrix whose columns are these vectors. And then your general solution is the linear combination of these vectors. So notice the difference here for your general solution is you're saying there could be some constant times this vector u1 times e to the r1t plus some constant times the next one plus some constant times the next one and so on. So the way that you can see your solutions for your homogeneous system. So now let's take a look at this example. So we've already done this, uh, but now we're going to find a general solution. We've already done half the work. So for the equation x prime equals ax, where a is this 2 by 2, find the general solution. So we've already done the work to find the eigenvalues. Uh, this should be a positive one. Let's fix that. Okay, so r1 was 1, r2 is negative 1. We found our eigenvectors corresponding to those eigenvalues. And so now we're just writing our um, general solution here. You can let this be any number. So I'm just going to say, uh, let's let s equal 1. So if s is 1, then u1 is the vector 3, 1, u2 is the vector 1, 1, and they are linearly independent. And so our general solution here, notice the format, it's just this format right back here with values plugged in. So it's x equals c1, some constant, e to the 1t, notice it's an invisible 1t from r1, and then the vector u1 was just 3, 1, plus c2, e to the negative t, because r2 was negative 1, that's where that negative came from, times u2, which is 1, 1. So there is our general solution. So if the problem started here, find a general solution to this equation with this matrix, then we would go back and do what we've already done. We would find the eigenvalues, find the corresponding eigenvectors, and then write out our general solution. All right, so next let's talk about some facts. These are a theorem, actually a theorem and a corollary regarding the linear independence of eigenvectors. So first one here says, if R1 to Rn are all distinct eigenvalues for A, meaning they're different from one another, then the eigenvectors U1 to Un that correspond to these eigenvalues are linearly independent. So basically this is saying, if when you find your eigenvalues, if they're all different from one another, then the eigenvectors that you find that correspond to those values are all going to be linearly independent. And then a fact that follows that is the following. If A is an n by n matrix and it has n distinct eigenvalues, and then we just say that u sub i is an eigenvector associated with a particular um, eigenvalue, r sub i, then this fundamental solution set right here is the fundamental solution set to the homogeneous system. And so this is really similar to what we were just looking at and talking about. Um, the difference being that just previously we were saying that we started with um, n linearly independent eigenvectors. This time we're starting with the fact that we have n distinct eigenvalues. Okay, so putting these together basically says if we have n distinct eigenvalues, then our eigenvectors are linearly independent, then this is our fundamental solution set. So it's kind of a nice fact knowing just that if we have different eigenvalues that this is true. Okay, so let's take a look at this example. Solve the initial value problem. Notice that we have an initial condition because it is an initial value problem. So we have x prime 
equals this 3 by 3 matrix times x, where x of 0 equals this vector here. All right, so starting off, let's find the eigenvalues. So remember how that goes. You're going to solve your characteristic equation. Now you have your determinant, where you've subtracted your eigenvalues down the diagonals. So this is equivalent to saying a minus ri. That's this determinant. We set it equal to 0. So this is a 3 by 3. So you can do cofactor expansion across any row or column. I'm going to go ahead and do it across row 1. So I did color code it so you can kind of tell what's happening. So entry 1, 1 times the 2 by 2 here, the minor matrix 2 by 2 determinant. And then minus, so alternating signs, minus 2 times, if you remember how this goes, cross out the row and column of 2, and then that's why what's in green is here, and then plus this third entry here, and then cross out the row and column of that entry, and determinant of that 2 by 2. Okay, so that's what we have here, and this is all just a little bit of algebra, the next few steps. So multiplying, simplifying, and doing a little bit of factoring, we end up with the following. We know that R1 is 1, R2 is 2, and R3 is 3. So we have three eigenvalues for this 3 by 3 matrix, and they are actually all distinct. They're all different. Okay. And so now we found our eigenvalues. Let's find our eigenvectors. So one at a time, we're going to um, work with each eigenvalue. So using the fact that our first eigenvalue is 1, subtract that for r, so basically what's here, everywhere there's an r, down the diagonals, just subtract one, and so that's why we have this, and I made it an augmented matrix already, setting it equal to 0, 0, 0. Okay. And so if you row reduce this matrix, you end up with the following. v1 is one negative 1 half v3, v2 is 1 half times v3, and v3 is free. Remember, you always want to write your solution in terms of the free variable, if you have one. So because v3 was free, we wanted to write v1 and v2 in terms of the free variable. All right, so then our eigenvector corresponding to this first eigenvalue is s. So if I say v3 is just s, it's s times this vector, negative 1 half, 1 half, and 1. But s can be any value, so I'm just going to go ahead and pick s to be 2 because it makes it a little bit nicer of a vector. I don't have to deal with my fractions any longer, so just by this choice, u1 is the vector negative 1, 1, and 2. Okay, so that's our, we found our three eigenvalues and our first eigenvector. We're going to repeat this process for r2 and r3. Okay, so for r2, so subtract 2 down the diagonals and set up your augmented matrix here. Row reduce it and you'll get this result here. And so we have that u2 is s. So again I'm letting the free variable be s. It's s time and then times this vector negative 1 half, 1 fourth, and 1. And this time I'm going to go ahead and let s be 4 again just so I don't have to deal with fractions. And so my vector becomes negative 2, 1, 4. And then same process, we won't go through it again, but when you work it out with R3, you get U3 is negative 1, 1, and 4. So we found our three eigenvectors corresponding to our three eigenvalues. All right, so they are three distinct eigenvalues that we had originally. Therefore, these vectors that we found are all linearly independent based on our theorem that we looked at just a minute ago. All right, so now we're ready for our general solution. And so we have x equals c1 e to the first eigenvalue t. So that was e to the 1t times our first eigenvector plus c2 e to the r2t. And that was a 2. So that's why it says e to the 2t times r2, or um, I'm sorry, vector u2, plus c3 e to the 3t because our third eigenvalue just happened to be 3 and times the vector u3. And you can also write that like this over here as a matrix times this vector c1, c2, c3. Now if 
we didn't have an initial condition given, this would be the end of it. This would be our general solution. But we have an initial condition, so we need to use it. Okay, and so if this says if we plug in 0 for x, then this is the result. And so basically, notice where that's going to take uh, the place of, it's going to take the place of t. So we have everywhere here, it's going to be e to the 0, which is 1. So it's going to be c1 times 1 times this vector, plus c2 times 1 times this vector, plus c3 times 1 times this vector. And so what that ends up looking like is the uh, matrix where the columns are just these vectors. And then we can times that by the vector c1, c2, c3. And we know what that should equal, the given vector, negative 1, 0, 0. And so let's go ahead and write this as an augmented matrix and row reduce it. And so here's our augmented matrix form. After some steps in row reducing, we end up with the following. And so we have the c1 is 0. That's from row 1. c2 is 1 from row 2. And then c3 is negative 1 from row 3. And so we put all that together for our final actual solution. So basically you go right back here to your general solution, but plug in your values for C1, C2, and C3. So because C1 was 0, this whole term is gone. Notice it's not, it's not here. Uh, C2 was 1, so notice that this starts with the invisible 1 times e to the 2t times this vector. And then C3 was negative 1, so this just becomes minus uh, invisible 1 times e to the 3t right here times that vector. So this is our solution. Okay, the very last thing to talk to you about is just real symmetric matrices. And so this is just a definition. A real symmetric matrix is one where the entries satisfy the fact that if you say A transpose, it's the same thing as A. So here's just a quick example of it. This matrix A is exactly the same if you take its transpose. And remember the transpose is when you just swap rows and columns. Alright, so that's it for this one. Thanks for watching.